The shuttle is down, the astronauts are safe, everything worked just flawlessly this morning out at White Sands Missile Range. Uh, the astronauts are still inside the vehicle there. You, we can see the, uh, you can see the tiles so well and so vividly in a photograph, in a tape like this, or picture like this. Those are the heat-resistant tiles, some of which they lost. I think we can see the pilots. If you've got a very well-tuned set, you can look in there and see Lausma and Fullerton. Uh, that's the flight deck you're looking at on the Columbia and what sights they have seen. Even this morning as they came in over the California coast, what a, uh, it was a beautiful day and they, they saw uh, half the southwest. And a pr just about a perfect landing. I don't know what just about means in that case. It looked wonderful to us and we would like to show it to you again. The final moments in the air of the third mission of the space shuttle. And they've tried out a second landing field now, too. That's right. So uh, the Cape later will be our third. There it is with its little fish trailing it, the chase plane. A thousand feet. Airspeed 292. Still in auto. 50 feet, gear coming. Here comes the gear. And uh, that's how it looked just a few minutes ago. Uh, nominal, as they say, which is high praise in some of these situations. Roy Neal is in Houston now with Glenn Lunny, who is the manager of the space shuttle program, Roy. And Glenn is one of the happiest men in Houston at the moment. Much relieved, I would imagine, Mr. Lunny. Feeling very well, thank I'll you. I'll bet. I was watching your face just now as you watched us replay that landing. You shared every second of that, didn't you? Of the landing and the flight. I guess, though, it's time now that they're safely back to put all this in some kind of perspective. And as a management person within the framework of the Space Administration, how do you see this flight? Was it good, bad, or indifferent? Well, I think it was terrific. We had three things to do. Get up okay, stay up for about a week, and get down okay. We did them all, and we stayed one more day. And you know, to us sitting here on the ground watching test flight going on, it's kind of like counting the nuts and bolts. Everything seems to go wrong. The sky is falling. Chicken Little was right. There were all sorts of things, including having to wave them off. And yet, you're looking at that a lot differently. Oh, uh, in perspective, we've had very few problems. Uh, we were dismayed at the, at the tile problem, but I think we'll figure out what that is, and we have a plan to strengthen the tiles. But uh, on balance, we felt it was very successful, very few problems, and the few that we had will be easy to fix and we'll be right back in the air for the rest of them. One last question, if I may. Um, right now, these are test flights. How does this flight pertain to the operational flights you're looking at starting well, the Well, the year? idea, of course, of the test flights is to uh, test the vehicles and be sure, that, uh, be sure that they're ready to go in the operations, and we feel that uh, with this kind of a flight and the success of it, we really will be. Uh, Landings in the future, we're going to probably have uh, several days options so that we'll be able to deal with the weather and uh, wave-offs or choices of uh, weather and landing sites will become a routine thing for us. Just like running an airline, <laughs> Glenn Luddy, who is, of course, the Space Shuttle Program Manager here in Houston at the Johnson Space Center. John? And at White Sands Missile Range, they are still, uh, have surrounded the space shuttle and they are beginning to purge it of some of its fuels and other uh, liquids aboard. It, at this stage of the operation, it's too soon for technicians to approach the craft itself. It's being done uh, in other ways. And there it is, home safe and sound, more than three million miles in space. We'll be back with more coverage of Columbia after this. just a video game from Atari or Intellivision. Invest in the wonder computer of the 1980s for under $300, the Commodore VIC-20. Unlike games, it has a real computer keyboard. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games, too. 
under $300, the wonder computer of the 1980s, the Commodore VIC-20. Coming soon, Commodore brings you Gorf, the Wonder Arcade game, and Omega Race in home versions. Commodore. I've raised six generations of top-winning Alaskan Malamutes on Calcan. Sheila Balch, Everybody. top breeder of champion Alaskan Malamutes. Calcan starts with rich red meat, high-quality meat that's protein-rich for strong muscles. Then they add vitamins for sharp eyes, calcium for strong bones and teeth, and whole egg for a shiny coat. It keeps my dogs at their absolute best. Here's the proof. I recommend Calcan. Calcan, recommended by top breeders to help make your dog top breeder healthy. Mr. Collins, I have hemorrhoids. If you don't use Preparation H, you could be missing medication that helps shrink swelling. Help shrink swelling? That's important to me. It should be. Preparation H has an exclusive formula that helps shrink swelling of inflamed hemorrhoidal tissues and often gives fast, temporary relief from pain and itch flare-ups. Relieves pain and itch, helps shrink swelling. I'll use Preparation H. Exclusive formula Preparation H relieves pain and itch, even helps shrink swelling. When bronchial asthma strikes, take Primatine Mist. Seconds count. Primatine, the fastest type relief known for occasional attacks. Restores free breathing in as fast as 15 seconds. Or to keep breathing freely for hours, Primatine Tablets. In the lungs, Primatine opens clogged breathing tubes, relaxes bronchial spasms, restores free breathing. Primatine Mist, the fastest type relief known. Primatine Tablets contains the asthma reliever doctors recommend most. We've just been listening to the astronauts chatting with Mission Control. The radios are still hooked up. They're still inside Columbia. You can see some of the technicians now. Delta to the hatch opening uh, due to the fact that you're uh, at 4,000 feet. And when you get to the uh, point, uh, let me know and I'll get it to you. Um, I'm not sure, okay. Vance, what 4,000 feet means. I know that <clears throat> White Sands is about 3,900 feet, isn't it, in that, altitude? That's right, John. It's a high-altitude landing field, and yeah. uh, they probably uh, suspect that there's, there's a little pressure on one side of the hatch or the other, and they want to make sure it's relieved so when they open the door, it uh, doesn't pop open. I see. Now, tell me what the astronauts are wearing now. Well, of course, they, they re-entered in their... Uh, uh, their spacesuits, uh, high-altitude suits with helmets and gloves and, and so forth. Uh, by now, they have the helmets off, the gloves off, to be a little more comfortable, to be able to reach around the cockpit to shut everything down. And uh, although they can sort of take a sigh of relief, they, they do want to uh, power down everything in a, in a very good fashion so that this is a perfect mission to the, the very last step that they have to perform. Well, well done so far. Heidi Schulman is standing by with an important person who watched the landing today. John, we may have just seen the Columbia land just in time. The wind has really begun to kick up out here, but before it did, we had a gorgeous view in the VIP Center. And among the spectators there, a very proud governor of New Mexico, Bruce King. Governor, your impressions of the landing? Well, it was just beautiful, and we're delighted to welcome Columbia to New Mexico. And we're just elated that it was a beautiful day. It was a very spectacular sight to see it come in from some 50 to 75 miles out when you could just barely see a view of it. And then as uh, Columbia came on in and came on down to land in the beautiful mountain background setting, and it's just something we're very proud of in New Mexico. We're very proud of White Sands and what we've been able to do. And you told, you told me a moment ago that you were very nervous about yesterday. We had that awful sandstorm, and it looked doubtful. Well, we always have one or two of those in late April and March, and we uh, were really concerned, and we're just elated that we did have such a beautiful day for Columbia to land today. But we were very concerned, and yesterday was one of the worst days that you ever see in the desert area, and when it is uh, the white sands, well, it moves. What kind of a boost now? This is obviously a very public occasion out here. What kind of a boost does it give to the space program here in New Mexico? Well, it gives a great uh, boost to the space program because we'll have about 355 days a year. Generally speaking, it wouldn't be too wet or too windy or anything that the space shuttle could operate from this area. So we know that we will have many more landings and many more takeoffs from this area. So we're just late. It means a great deal to us. It also means a great deal to us to have the opportunity to greet all of the people throughout the international area of the United States and welcome them to our great state of the land of enchantment, New Mexico. Governor, thank you very much. We're going back to John Chancellor in New York.
Thank you, Heidi. For an hour or two yesterday afternoon, it looked as though the Columbia might have to land at the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral. So we sent Lloyd Dobbins of our staff down there to see if it was going to land and report on it. It didn't land, but we thought it was totally unfair not to switch to Lloyd Dobbins this morning. So here he is, Lloyd Dobbins, where it didn't land. Lloyd? This is the landing strip. We're having a little trouble getting Dobbins' audio. This is the landing strip at the Kennedy Space Center. And what's that aircraft, Vance? That is the uh, shuttle training airplane, the Gulfstream II, that has a cockpit just like the shuttles. Yeah. And, and, of course, that's what John Young has been flying around to check the weather this morning. Have you flown in that aircraft? Yes, I have. It's, How do you make an aircraft feel like a shuttle? <clears throat> Well, it's uh, a lot of it's done through computers. You know, they they put in special computers to implement the control surfaces uh, differently and all. And yeah. the, of course, we have a, a stick and instruments like the the shuttles on the left side of the cockpit.